Hello, welcome back. Day seven of our free treat, our freedom retreat. And the theme today is the balance between love and fear. And it's really important for our health, our peace of mind, how we're doing, how we're contributing to the world. We have a, a good balance there. Because fear is not all bad. Of course, we need some fear in our lives. Uh, if we step out in front of a bus, we need the fear to make us jump back. We need the fear to prevent us from being too reckless, spending all our money, or uh, blurting out exactly what's on our mind, maybe, when a little bit later we might not feel that bad. So we need some fear, but at the moment there's a lot of fear in the world. And if you uh, get into social media or watch the news, then you can feel your fear levels going up and going up. And you may have noticed in yourself and in other people around you that when someone's in fear, it's quite hard for them to feel love. So the fear takes over, it fills all the systems in their body and the love can't get through it's blocked. So we're going to be looking at a couple of ideas to redress that balance because when we're operating from love we feel better. That's a, that's a great advantage. We're better people usually. Yeah, we're more generous, we're more helpful, we're more thoughtful, just more open-hearted. So let's look at fear first and one of the things I like to do is uh, a fear inventory. So it can be tempting to maybe squash away your fears. Think, oh, no, I don't really feel that. I'm going to pretend I'm not afraid of that and push it down and push it down. But that could be counterproductive because it could just cause a lot of blocked fear inside yourself. So with a fear inventory, you get, you get your pen and paper and you write it all down. Yeah. I know. Uh, so you, you start at the top of the fear inventory and you write, each time you write, I fear whatever it is, because, and then we're getting into a different area. So, for example, um, you might say, I fear snakes. And if you add the because, you think about the because, really it's about dying. I fear snakes because I don't want to die. So what you're doing then is taking the fear and opening it out into a vulnerability. And vulnerability is really important to our humanity. Mm. Being able to be vulnerable, accepting our vulnerability, loving our vulnerability, loving the vulnerability in others as well. So you just keep writing and keep writing and keep writing until you fill the whole page with these things. Maybe you've got to write more. I sat next to a guy on a plane once and he did four pages of this. Maybe you have more to say, especially the first time. Maybe you can't think of anything. You have to start off with things that should be a bit silly. That's fine. Just start there. Start with the silly things. And you'll find that you get going and more things start to come out. Then when you're finished, this is the good bit. You tear it out of the book. So we're just going to rip it up. Rip it up. There you go. Fears. Take that. Take that. And then you might have a little place in your home or your garden where you want to burn the pieces or you put them carefully in the recycling bin because fear may as well do some good to somebody. Good. So that's hopefully when you do that exercise you'll find confronting your fears a bit like that old thing of uh, you see a monster in your nightmare and you actually go up to it instead of running away from it and it turns out to not be so scary after all. Just writing them down helps. And now, secondly, let's let's look at love. And we're looking at love in the broadest possible sense here. Not just romantic love, which we hear a lot about in our society, but the love you feel for members of your family, the love you feel for your favourite shoes, the love you feel for a beautiful view, um, for humanity, for people who are doing heroic things at the moment, for people showing great leadership, that universal love that's for everybody. 
and to help expand that in you we're going to I'm going to teach you a breathing method and then we're going to use it to expand the love so the breathing method is called four by four um, and I I like calling it that because it means it's good for all terrains. You can use it wherever or whenever you are. It's got a lot of power in it. And it can get you out of trouble and make you feel better. And it's called four by four because it's in four parts and each part lasts for a count of four. So first of all, just the breathing is that you inhale for four. You hold your breath for four. You exhale for four. And you hold your breath out, you hold emptiness for four. So let's just do that together a couple of times. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Three, four, good. And that pause, especially with no breath, is something we don't usually do. And it's, uh, it's very therapeutic. Now, as well as doing that, we're going to be associating it with our body. And this is to tap into something called the, the cycle, the universal cycle. It's in our body and it's in the universe, it's in the galaxy, it's on the, in the planet. It's in everything. It's this constant cycle. So as you inhale, imagine the breath is moving up your spine. Yeah. One, two, three, four. And as you hold the breath for four, imagine that energy is moving from your back to your front, through your throat, through this really important connection between our minds, where there's so much going on all the time, and our bodies, which have to do everything. And suffer the consequences maybe of what's happening in our mind so it's coming through two three four exhale down the front of your body two three four and then as you hold the pause the energy moves from the front to the back through your lower belly cleaning out so that's in two three four at the back forward two three four Exhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. I go sideways, is that easier? So, in, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Hold out, two, three, four. So while we're doing it, I'm just going to be doing that with my hand. Now you know what I mean by it. So to go back to the love bit, bring into your mind something, somebody that's so easy for you to love. It might be a cat. It might be your granddaughter. It might be your dad. Whoever it is, somebody who pretty much every time you think of them or it, you just get that nice warm glow. And imagine you're holding that love and you're holding it against your heart. And we're going to use that love to expand our sense of love. So we do the breath. So inhale. Yeah, I hope you felt that. I certainly did. <laughs>